All right, and we have started. All right, can everybody hear me good this morning? All right, thank you, Terry. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. I pray that y'all are having a good morning. Um, today we're going to be talking about suffering, afflictions that we go through. Um, let's see here. We're going to start in Romans. And the title is Finding Hope in Our Afflictions. A lot of times we feel like things that we go through that there's no hope. There's no end. We can't seem to can't seem to find that peace through our afflictions, through our trials, everything that we go through. And sometimes sometimes it's really hard to focus on hope when you have so much weighing on you. So let's go to Romans, and then I've got a lot of scripture to share. The Lord pressed upon me that this needed to be spoken about. So I'm going to give you what I got. I do have my notes, so I will be. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes. I've, I'm still not good at just rolling off the tongue of everything, but we're going to rely on the Holy Spirit as always and see what he can do today. So we're going to start in Romans. Chapter 10, verse 20, and it says, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Also, we have Romans 12:12. 12, 12. That was the first one I wanted to read. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually instant in prayer. So when we're going through our trials, when we're going through our tribulations, our afflictions, sufferings, whatever you want to call it, we all have names for it, you have to rely on God. You have to pray. You have to focus. It, I know it's hard. Believe me, I've been going through trials myself, but God, God's the only way. He's the only one that can help us get through it, and I'm a living testimony to that. So just put your focus on Him. Today, I'm going to be discussing also, let me get it here. I got a lot of notes. It just flowed and flowed, and you can you can find out from Pastor Carter when I was doing my homework, it was like, you have to only do a paragraph. I'm used to doing like three or four pages because I can't stop. <laughs> the Lord gives it to me, and I don't know how to condense it. So forgive me and bear with me. Pray for me today because I am very tired. We've had a long night. Um... If y'all could, please pray. Last night, we had an incident where Michael and the children had went out last night to talk about trials. And they had went to the store, and a man crossing the highway, a six-lane highway, walked right out in front of Michael and my two children. He had Destiny and Nathan with him. Um, he hit him on the corner of his truck. The man is alive. He's doing okay. He's in the hospital right now. Um, the kids, they are, they're very shaken up right now. They can't seem to get that image out of their heads, and I could only imagine what they're going through. Um, so if you could, please pray for them, that the Lord give them peace and comfort. We pray for the man, that he will heal completely, in Jesus' name, that if we we thank God that he's okay and that, you know, it could have been a lot worse. We thank God for saving him. We thank God for saving my family. Um, anyone else that was involved, as far as I know, there was no one else. 
Um, and <laughs> what is so messed up about the whole situation is people, there was people that came to his attendance to help him, but you had those who were standing around taking pictures and live streaming and just standing there and not offering help. And that just that boggles my mind of why people are so caught up in their phones and in Facebook and in the world that they can't see what's in front of them that's serious. I'm going to get started. I'm going to get upset. <laughs> but praise God, the man is okay. Uh, we pray that maybe if there's anything going on in his life, he had ha we had heard from the officer that he had an incident earlier that day, that he had an encounter with an officer. We don't know the situation. I'm not going to put it out there because I don't know. But he needs prayer. Uh, me and the kids prayed for him last night, and we felt an urgency that there was something about this man that he needed something. And I don't know if God allowed this for a reason for that man, maybe for my family, but we feel that it was more for the man. And we're praying for his salvation. We're praying that if he doesn't have God in his life, that this will be a testament and a wake-up call to him. And that he sees what God did for him. Yes, he got hit. He got hurt. But he's alive. He is alive today. And God protected him. And he saved him. So let's pray for him. Pray for God's will to be done for him, for his life, for his family that he may have that's been affected by this. My family, for my children. So please just be with them. Oh, it's been, let me tell you, it's been a night. So we've had no sleep. We're tired. So bear with me today as I try and get everything situated. But thank you all for those who reached out last night and prayed for us. We greatly appreciate it. Like I said, just continue to pray for them. Pray for Michael and my children. Um, the one good thing about the whole situation is there was an officer part right across from where it had happened and he got the whole thing on his de on his dash cam and and the man was at fault he ran right out in the middle of traffic so it was no fault to michael he there's no charges nothing so praise god for that everything's okay nobody's in trouble everybody's fine so the main thing is that we pray that this man be okay and we'll have more information Monday on his recovery from the officer. So just continue in prayer and praise God for him being there and protecting everybody. Because it could have been worse. So praise God. There's always hope. <laughs> There's always hope in a trial. That was a bad situation. But the hope was they got saved. They were okay. They were protected. So praise God. All right, now I'll quit talking about that. I just wanted to thank y'all and ask y'all to pray. So we're going to talk about four ways that we suffer, okay? This, there's several ways actually, but this is going to talk about the sources of just the suffering, okay? Number one, the source can be our sin. Who's responsible? Me, you, everybody else. We are responsible for our own sin. Nobody else is to blame for that. Who's affected? Me and anybody around me. Because of my sin that I commit, it could affect my family, my children, my friends, my fam my parents, whoever. And the needed response for that when we do sin is to confess to God in repentance. Ask him to forgive you. Turn from that sin and walk away from it. Another, number two, another source is others who sin. 
Who's responsible for that? The person who sinned and or others who allowed the sin. Yes, we can allow others to sin. We can be a stumbling block to others as well. We can cause people to sin. Who's affected? Many people, including the one who sinned. Okay? And that could mean, okay, when you want to include people that's affected by the sin, okay, the sin that you could commit, say, drugs, okay, say somebody you love is on drugs, does that affect you? Yeah. You have family, it can affect your family, it affects you and your health, your life. It can affect those around you who care about you, who worry about you. Are you going to live? Or are you going to die? I mean, it's a, it's a hard truth to have to face, but it, it's real, and it does affect us. I have loved ones that are struggling, that's on drugs, and it's it, it rips your heart out. You feel like there's nothing you can do for them, but... That's going to be a long, <laughs> I'm, we're just going to stop right there because that, that's a whole other teaching. But you get the example of what I'm saying. The needed response for that is to resist the sinful, sinful behavior and while accepting the sinner. And if you don't know what that means, the one sinning needs to resist it. Okay, the one that needs to accept the sinner is the one, is you, that person that's on drugs. You need to accept them. You need to love them. You need to pray for them. Those who are out doing things that they ought not to be, drinking, partying. I have loved ones who do that, but I love them. I accept them. I don't accept their sin. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I accept their sin. I accept them. And I love them. And I pray for them. Okay. Number three. The source avoidable physical or natural disasters. Who's responsible? The ones who ignored the facts or who refused to take proper precautions. Who's affected? Those who are exposed to it. And what's the needed response? If possible, prevent it. And being prepared if it can't be prevented. Number four, source unavoidable physical or natural disasters. Who's responsible? God or Satan? This is where we get into Job. Who is affected? Those who are present. And the needed response? Continuing trust in God's faithfulness. He is faithful through anything and everything that we are going through. Now, how the suffering affects us, here are ways that it is helpful. Yes, suffering can be helpful to us. Praise God. We may not think it is when we're going through it, but trust me, it is. It helps you in so many ways, and I'm about to give you those examples. Number one, when we are suffering, we turn and seek God for endurance, understanding, and deliverance. When you are so far deep in your sin or your affliction or your pain, and I'm going to give you a testimony here in a moment of that, but when you're so deep into it and you feel like there's nowhere else to turn, I, I can't find hope. Oh, this is not going to stop. When is it going to end? God is the way. He's the answer. He will give you deliverance. He will help you endure. Sometimes when we ask God for help, sometimes the answer is yes. 
Sometimes it's no. The no is the hard part, believe me. And sometimes it's wait. Be patient and wait on him. Patience is another thing that we're not good at, that we have a very hard time accepting. Believe me, I'm not good at it. And never pray for patience because the Lord will give you more trials than that he will allow to happen that you don't want. So pray for strength, pray for endurance, and he will get you through it. Number two, we ask questions that we may not think about during our normal routines. Number three, we are prepared to identify it and be able to comfort others who suffer. So pretty much if you're going through something, you identify the problem, you know how to go how to go to God to get it straightened out to fix it. And sometimes our suffering can turn into comfort for others. We can be a living testimony to the things that we go through. So trust God, trust your suffering, make sure that you rely on him. Uh let's see. Number 4. We open ourselves up to being helped by others that are obeying God. So when somebody offers us help, listen, take it. Trust God, rely on him first, but trust those who those who are the same believers as you are. Those who know, know the word of God, excuse me, I'm stumbling on my words. <laughs> Those who know the word of God that will give you good advice from scripture. So trust them. Let them help you. Let them give you the guidance that you need. Number five, we are ready to learn by God who is trustworthy. Trust God. If anything, he's the only one that you can trust that you know that is going to be completely faithful and give you what you need. Number six, we end up realizing that we can identify with what Jesus suffered on the cross of Calvary for us. Pretty much our suffering that we endure day by day by day does not compare to what Jesus went through. Amen. I I would not have been able to take the nails for any of y'all. And I'm pretty sure y'all wouldn't either. There, you would not be able to take somebody else sins upon yourself for things that they've done or those who your enemies could you imagine being crucified for somebody else who's spit in your face who's persecuted you and ridiculed you I couldn't the old me the old flesh in me would been lashing out at them I'd be like forget you I, I don't I don't want to have nothing to do with you but God, God, Jesus did. He took our sins. He put everything on himself. He took the nails. He took the thorns. He took the lashings on his back for us. I I can't even imagine it. It makes me feel horrible. It makes me feel ashamed that he had to do that for me. I am nothing. I am filthy rags. But he did that for me and you. Think about it. How much love that he gives us. Through everything, the suffering that he endured for us, we don't deserve it. 
I deserve a life sentence to hell for everything I have done, still doing. I'm not worthy of that. But he says I am. Praise God. He says that I am worthy to be loved. I am worthy to be saved. And he is with me. And I endure. I get through every day because of him. Because of what he did for me. For you. Praise God. Praise God. And I wish that people could see that. I wish that even Christians, uh, we forget sometimes. We get so caught up in our lives, in our Facebook, in our Instagram, Twitter, the world, in our jobs, in our day-to-day -day routines that we forget. We get so caught up in the pains that we have daily, the sufferings that we have daily, that we forget. We forget that God's there. We forget what God has done. We forget the promises that he made to us. There is hope. There is life. We have what we need if we will only trust and believe You can't, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and I'm getting emotional. Whew. Forgive me. <laughs> I'm getting off here. I'm getting fired up. Whew. All right. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the love. Thank you for taking that pain from me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for taking the cross in my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. I just have to praise him right now. I can feel it. I just have to praise him. Praise God for what he's done. We need to praise him more. We don't praise him enough. We are so caught up, we don't praise him enough. Every morning I get up, first thing I do is fall to my knees and I praise God. I thank him for waking up that day. I thank him and I thank him for the trials that are coming that day. But I also thank him for being there with me and already having it taken care of. It is handled. And I know that I'm going to be okay. And I praise God. And I thank him. And then I make my requests known to him. He already knows them before I even speak them. And he takes care of me. But praise God. Praise him through everything. Show him that you love him too. Do we tell Jesus that we love him enough? I don't think we do sometimes. We get caught up. We just don't tell him enough. We tell our family. We, I tell my children. You may tell your children, your family, your spouse, and you... Adore them and you show so much love for them. You do anything for them. You would die for your family and your loved ones. Would you do it for Jesus? Would you tell him you love him? Would you lay down your life for him? Would you suffer as he suffered? It's something to think about. And I don't know who this is for. The Lord laid it on me. I wasn't even going to go into all that. I, that's the Holy Spirit talking right now. Listen. Hear what he has to say. If that's you, listen to him. Tell him you love him. Listen to him. Hear him when he tells you that he loves you. Because I know he tells you every day. He tells me every day. And if you quiet yourself just enough 
you'll be able to hear him. You will hear him. And when you hear when you hear God say Dustina or Terry or Jackie or Megan or Ryan, any of y'all, any of y'all out there that's watching or will watch later, when you hear God say, I love you. <laughs> it's the most amazing feeling in the world. And it's the most powerful love that you will ever feel or imagine. That's more love than anybody on this earth could give you. And I praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that love. Okay. <laughs> That was for somebody. And and if you feel unloved, no, Jesus does love you. He is with you. And he's going to help you with whatever you are going through. I promise you that. I promise you. God is going to help you through it. When there seems to be no way, God is the way. Jesus. Jesus Christ is the way. Love him. Trust him. Let him love you. Let him wrap his arms around you and hold you. Don't push him away. I feel like somebody's pushing him away because of what you're going through. Don't do it. Stop. You're missing out on something so pure and so good. Stop pushing him away. I know. I've been there. You don't want to do it. It's so dark and it's so lonely without him. Don't push him away. Trust him. Let him hold you. Cry to him. Let him give you strength and endurance through everything that you're going through. That's the only way you're going to make it, honey. Give it to him. And I don't know who that's for. I wasn't even going to get on all that, but the Holy Spirit's moving me right now. Somebody needs to hear this. I don't know who you are. But know that you are loved by God. You are loved by me. I love you. I love everyone, and I pray for you. I pray that God gives you strength. I pray, God, Jesus, Lord, whoever it is, I pray, Father, that you give them strength. Show them, Father, your love that you have for them, Lord. Help them, Father, with whatever they are going through, Lord. They feel, I feel like they feel that they have no hope. They feel like that there's no end. To what they're going through right now. Lord I pray that you show them. There is an end. There is a way. That they can get through it. That you are there. That you are holding them Lord. That you're telling them. That you are with them. That it is okay. That you have it handled. That they're going to get through this. You've already taken care of it God. You've already taken care of it. Show them, God, that they're going to get through it. They're going to get through it. Jesus knows what you're going through. And he's not going to forsake you. He's not going to leave you. If you don't have him in your life, get him now. It's the only way that you're going to get through what you're going through. And Lord, I rebuke and I bind the spirit of deception. I bind that spirit that's got a stronghold on them, Lord. Lord, I pray and I rebuke those afflictions that's upon them right now, Father. Lord, if they have any unforgiveness, that's holding them down. I feel like there's unforgiveness, Father. Lord, I pray that you will help them to forgive as you have forgiven us. 
Lord Jesus, just help them. Be with them. Give them strength. Show them that they are loved. Lord, bring people into their lives that can show them that they are loved. Believers who can help them. If you don't have nobody, reach out to somebody. Reach out to a pastor, to a good friend that may have been trying to talk to you, trying to help you that's a believer. Let them guide you and help you. But most of go to the Word of God. Go to Jesus. If you don't know how to pray, talk to Him as I'm talking to you. Go to a quiet place. Sit down. Go to your knees. Lay on your face. Whatever you feel in your heart that you need to do. And just talk to Him. Say, God, you know what I'm going through. You know the things that I'm facing. You know the trials that are upon me. You know my heartache. You know how it's broken. My heart is broken. And I need help. Save me. Help me. I don't know what to do. God knows what to do. Lay it at his feet. Every bit of it. Don't lay it down at his feet and say, here you go, God, and then turn around and grab it back. And think, okay, I can fix this. Here, God, you can only have this part, but let me take care of this part. No, it don't work that way. you got to give it all to Him. If you don't, you're going to continue suffering. You're going to continue going through things. Because we can't fix it. People say that God will not put on you more than you can handle. Honestly, I've never seen that in the Word of God, but the Word of God does say that He is your strength. It does say that we can't handle it. We can't do it. But with God, we can't. He is our strength. He is the one that helps us. He is the one that helps us get through these things. We can't do it. I've done tried. <laughs> I tried to fix things. I can't fix them. God, if I could, (laughs) how much easier it would be. But I would probably just mess it up. We're good about that. We're good about messing things up. We don't like to admit it sometimes, but we do. But we need to rely on Him. We need to rely on God. And I pray that whoever needs it, Please, hear me. Hear God. Hear what He's trying to say to you right now. Listen to Him. Trust Him. He will get you through it. Amen? Alright. I don't know who that's for, but I'm praying for you. I am praying for you. Whoever you are, God knows who you are. He knows who you are. And I'm praying for you. And know I love you. He loves you. And you will get through it. I promise you. You will get through it. And you're going to hear my testimonies here in just a moment. And I will tell you what he can do. Amen. All right. Let's get back on track. (laughs) Excuse me. All right. Hmm. Wow. Sitting here talking about Jesus and what he went through. Number six. Tell me this isn't the Holy Spirit. Other ways that our suffering is helpful. (laughs) Forgive me. I'm very emotional right now. I can feel the Holy Spirit all over me. Number six. We end up realizing that we can identify 
what Jesus suffered on the cross of Calvary for us. Amen. Amen. I didn't even see that. Praise God. I didn't even see that when the Holy Spirit pressed upon me to give you that word. I didn't even see this, but I had it written down. The Holy Spirit already knew it was already there. That is for somebody. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like somebody's got deliverance right now. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Wow, I'm just in awe right now. <laughs> this was not planned, I promise you. God is my witness. This was not planned. Thank you, Jesus. There you go, right there. We can identify what Jesus suffered on Calvary. We have our sufferings. We have our pain. We have our persecutions. We've been beaten. We've been abused. We've went through so much. But it doesn't compare to what Jesus went through. But we can identify to it. He understands. He's been through it. You sit and you say, God, this person don't love me. My family rejected me. They don't love me. Jesus' family rejected him. His own city, his own town, his own people rejected him. You can say, and I can attest to this, Lord, I've been abused. I've been beaten. I've physically been beaten. So did Jesus. He was beaten. He was whipped till the flesh was falling off of him. He was beaten also. You don't think he knows? You don't think he understands? I didn't when I was going through it. But praise God, he knew and he understood. You can say, God, I can't even give the word. I cannot tell people about you without being cursed at, without being tortured and persecuted and called names, or being attacked physically, emotionally, spiritually. God, I'm suffering. How am I to be a Christian? How am I to testify about you? How am I supposed to do this? They reject me. They don't want to hear the word. They don't want to hear the truth, God. How? How am I supposed to endure? I can't do this, God. Why have you forsaken me? But God, Jesus, he was rejected. He was beaten. He was persecuted. He was turned away. People would tell him to leave. They don't want to hear it. When Jesus was given and testifying the word of God to the people in the synagogues, to the Sadducees, to the Pharisees, to all the sinners. Some accepted, but a lot didn't. And those same people who accepted and listened, what did they do in the end? Crucify him. Those same people who was praising Jesus, those same people on Palm Sunday, who were waving their palms, who were out there praising, 
Jesus, Jesus, he's come to us. They turned around, they turned their back on him later when he was being crucified. He was rejected. They, no one wanted to hear God. No one wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. He spoke the most beautiful things. He gave so much to so many. He healed people. He saved people. He rose people from the dead. And they still rejected him. Do you hear what he's saying? He hears you. He knows. He's went through it. He's been there. You don't think that when you're sitting and you're crying and you're weeping to him, do you don't think that he's not there crying with you? He's went through it. He knows. He's crying with you. He's weeping. He shed his blood for us. He shed his blood for those who rejected him. And he forgave them. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That was his words. He knows our pain. He knows our suffering. He knows what we're going through. you got to trust him. And forgive me, I'm getting... That just, I don't even know what to say right now. All right. <clears throat> Forgive me. Number seven. We become sensitized to the amount of suffering that is in the world. Sometimes we can be desensitized to the suffering in the world. We're so caught up in our own lives that we don't see others who are hurting. We don't see others who need a helping hand, who need prayer, because we're too focused on ourselves. Okay, I need to speed this up because I still got to do a few things. Alright, the next thing is why suffering can be harmful. And I'm going to go through these quite quickly. So if you're taking notes, you can go back and listen again if you want to write these down. But I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. So forgive me, I just, I looked at the time and we've got so caught up into the spirit that... I noticed that we've already went through an hour. Praise God. Number one, we end up becoming hardened and reject God. Number two, we end up refusing to ask questions that might be good for us, and we miss the lessons that come with it. And there is so much I can explain for all these, but I'm not going to get into it. Like I said, go back, write these down. I encourage you, write these down. Go back, pause it, write it down. Study upon these because let me. these will be a blessing to you, I promise you. They were to me. Because not only am I teaching this to y'all, I'm preaching to myself. This is a lesson for me too. This ain't just for y'all. This is for me. God's talking to me too. Number three, when we suffer, we end up allowing it to cause us to be selfish and self-centered. That's that pity party that we get into. Number four, when others try to help us with great wisdom and advice, we end up withdrawing 
from them, from the people who try to help us. We reject them. We don't want their help. We ignore them. We can't do that. That's harmful for us. Number five, another way that's harmful to us is we reject that God can bring good out of our sufferings. Number six, we end up accusing God for being unjust in our situations and we may lead others to reject him because of such. When we get into ourselves and the things that we're going through and we think, oh, God's doing this on purpose. He's just out to get me. Why is he punishing me? Yada, yada. What impression are we putting on other people? That's harmful to not only us, but to them as well. Where's their hope going to come from? They're looking at you and what you're going through. And if you're sitting there saying, oh, well, it's not fair and God's just attacking me and he's not going to help me, that's going to be the same attitude that you're reflecting onto somebody else. And they're not going to rely on God either. And you can't do that. Don't do that. Don't be a stumbling block for somebody else because you're caught up in your own selfishness and your own pity party and everything that you go through and I mean that with love I have done that I'm not accusing or judging anyone but I'm telling you the truth right now and somebody needs to hear it get out of it number seven we also refuse to be open to any changes God may bring into our lives when we close him off when we ignore him how do you expect to get deliverance? How do you expect for your situations to change? You've done rejected him. You've done said, God, you ain't going to help me with this. There's no hope. How do you expect those changes to come when you do that? Stop. Stop pushing him away. And let's see. I don't think I'm going to be able to get through it all, but I'm going to do this very quickly. All right. There's four views of suffering. Number one, we have Satan's view of it, which is most people will only believe in God when they are not suffering and are prospering. This is wrong. Don't do this. This is a mistake. This is a lie from the devil himself. I said we're going to expose Satan's lies. Here's one of them. You cannot do that. Number two, we see in Job with the view of his three friends that suffering is God's way of judgment for sin. This is not always the case. Don't believe that. If you don't know the story of Job, I highly recommend that you read it. A lot of us can relate to it. Number three, we have Elias's. I forgive me, I could not pronounce his name good. We have his view that suffering can be God's way to discipline, refine, and to teach us amen this is very true but it has an incomplete explanation on it which is saying that help me Holy Spirit you gave me this how do I explain it now yes okay when we're suffering and it's God's way to discipline and refine us and to teach us Sometimes it can get us out of that self-pity. Sometimes it can, oh, what am I looking for here? I had it. I rebuke you, devil. You just took it from my tongue. <sighs> Forgive me. I'm drawing a blank right now. I had it, and the devil just stole it. 
Maybe it wasn't meant to speak about. God knows. He'll take care of it. He's in control. Amen? Forgive me on that. Moving on. Number four. Then we have God's view. That suffering causes us to put more trust in God for who he really is and not what he does. And lastly, when we suffer. Here I have six questions that we need to ask ourselves daily. When we suffer and what we are to do. Uh, let's see. Questions. Number one. I'm going to give you a question and what our response is supposed to be. Number one. Am I being punished by God for my sins? Our response should be, we need to confess our sins, the ones known and unknown. If you feel that you're being punished for something you've done, take it to God. Confess it. Say, Lord, if there's anything that I've done that I don't know about, reveal it to me so that I can confess, that I may repent and it be delivered. Amen? Number two. Is Satan attacking me because I'm trying to live a faithful Christian life? Our response should be, we need to seek God for strength. Number three, am I being prepared for service and compassionate to those who are suffering? Our response, resist from self-pity. Amen. And ask God to open up doors for opportunities to help others who suffer and to, to discover who they are. Again, what we go through can be an opportunity to reach others, to be a testimony, to help them. So ask God these things. Give these responses. Number four. Has God specifically chosen me for testing like Job? I'm pretty sure a lot of us have asked this, asked this question. I know I have. Our response. We need to accept help from other believers and trust in God to work His purpose, not ours, His, in and through us. Number five, is suffering from a result of natural consequences in which I'm not directly responsible for. Our response should be, we need to recognize that evil and good people, evil people and good people, excuse me, suffer because of the sinful world we live in. But with a believer... They have a promise from God that suffering will one day come to an end. If you are a sinner, if you do not have Jesus Christ in your heart, you do not have salvation, I suggest if you want the things that are going, in your, going on in your life that are trials and suffering and pain and persecution and everything, woe is me, self-pity, go Throw it away. Fall to your knees right now and ask God to forgive you and to come into your heart and to save you, to help you. Because if you don't have Jesus, and I attest to this, and I'm sure many of y'all can too, when we were living for the devil and not for God, we suffered greatly. We went through so much stuff that we can't even imagine. We had no hope then. We had no hope. We had no deliverance. There was no endurance. There was just pain and suffering. If you don't have Jesus, you're not going to get deliverance. Those pains are never going to go away. The devil is going to continue to afflict you. And God will allow it until you see that you need help, that you need him. 
And number six, is there an unknown reason for my suffering? Our response, don't focus on the pain or draw into it. Proclaim your trust and faith in God, knowing that he cares for you and wait patiently for him and his aid for you. Amen. Wait for him. Proclaim it. If you're suffering through something right now and you feel like that, Lord, I can't get through this, there's no hope, don't, don't claim it. Don't claim those pains. Don't claim the hurt, everything you're going through. Stop. You're just letting the devil win. You're, you're, you're claiming it. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. Rebuke those spirit afflictions. Trust Jesus. Have him help you through it. He's your only deliverance. He's the only way. All right. And we're about to run out of time. All right. So I'm going to give you all some scriptures. I'm not going to read them all. You can write them down. So you can look on them later. Um, Romans 12:12, 12, 12, Romans 15:13, Jeremiah 29:11. This is my favorite one in this, and I'll read. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an ex. Expected, an expected end. L listen to that word, expect it. Expect your deliverance. Expect God to help you. Expect Him to be there. There is a light at the end of your tunnel. It's not always going to be darkness. Deuteronomy 31.6 Isaiah 40.31 I want to read that one too. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Amen. Isaiah 41.10 Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Psalms 39, 7. Proverbs 23, 18. And Hebrews 11, 1. Which says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not Amen. Praise God. Oh, and I have one more. Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now, for those of you who need salvation, I'm going to do an altar call right now. And I'm going to throw out some scriptures and then we're going to do the prayer of salvation. If you're lost, you're lonely, you have no hope. You feel like there's not an end to anything. There is. And his name is Jesus Christ. He is your deliverance. He is your hope. He is your help through times of trouble and times of need. Give your heart to him today. Don't wait till tomorrow or next week. Don't say, God, I need to straighten myself up first. I need to get rid of my addiction first. I need to take care of this and that before, clean myself up before I come before you. God says, come as you are. Come, you old weary sinner. 
give it to him. Drugs, fornication, adultery, abuse, the abuser, blasphemous, whatever. Whatever your sin is, you murderous, you liar, give it to God. Trust Him. Fall to your knees. Pray to Him. Ask Him to save you. Ask Him to deliver you from the devil and from the afflictions that are placed upon you each and every day. No one is exempt. Hell is real. And people go there every day. Heaven is real. People go there every day. But the sad truth is, more people go to hell than they do heaven. And it's in the Word. Broad is the path to destruction. Narrow is the gate to righteousness. Small remnant. Don't, please, don't be on that broad path. Get off of it. Fork your way. Go to that narrow path that's off to the side. The one that's rocky. The one that's got hills and valleys. The seems too rough. Oh, this wide path. It's so straight. It's so smooth. It's so easy. That easy way is going to kill you. There, that narrow path may be rocky. It may have the hills that you have to sweat and climb and bleed for. It may have the valleys where you're going to stumble and fall. But Jesus is with you and he's going to carry you through it. He's going to get you to that end. Lay it at his feet. Give it to him. Get saved. There's no promise of tomorrow. There's no promise for five minutes from now. Give your heart to him now before it's too late. Sometimes we don't get second chances. So we're going to do the prayer. If you're sitting there right now and you're saying to Cena, how do I get saved? I don't know how. What do I need to do? God, how do I get saved? Go to him. For Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For Jesus says in John fourteen six, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the way. Not Buddha, not Allah, not Muhammad, not anybody. There's no other God. Jesus is the one true God. He is the one true way. The ways to heaven is through Jesus Christ. So what must you do to be saved? We must believe that Jesus died for our sins and that he arose from the grave. We must ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins and we must accept Jesus as our Savior and our Lord. When you make Jesus your Lord and Savior, then you seek to make good decisions based on the Bible, which is God's holy word for your life. The Bible is our lifeline. That is our guide through life. All these self-help books, all these other things that tells you, oh, well, this is the way, this is how you get through this. No. Sometimes they can be helpful. Devotionals are helpful, yes. But the one true God 
the Bible, the Word of God right here. That is your way. That is your lifeline. That is your guide, your instruction. Go to it. There's not a question on this earth that cannot be asked that God has not answered right here. Seek it. Search it. You will find it. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be answered. God's words. Read it. It's there for you. Now, for those who need salvation, we're going to pray this prayer. And those who have drifted away from God that need to come back to God, rededicate, whatever you want to call it, give your heart back to Him. Trust Him fully. Lay it all at His feet. Let Him take care of it. Give it to Him. And you sinners, give your heart to Him. Let us pray the prayer of salvation. Dear Heavenly Father, repeat these words. Repeat them in your heart, in your mind, whatever you got to do. If you're somewhere and you can't say it out loud, say it within your heart. God knows your heart. He can hear it. Listen. He will listen. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus paid for my sins on the cross. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. And I repent of my sins. All the ones known and unknown. Lord, if there's anything unknown, I confess them, Lord. I pray that you reveal it to me so that I may repent of it. Lord, I ask you to wash me clean of all of my sins and enter into my heart and my life. I put my faith and trust in Jesus as my only hope for living eternally with you in heaven. I ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. I want to live my life for Jesus Christ. I understand that my salvation is not based on my works, but on the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for your precious blood that you shed for me. Save me, Lord. Redeem me. Put my name in the book of life. Guide me and use me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for those, if you have prayed that prayer, you have been entered into the book of life. Jesus is now in your heart, and he's going to save you. You are saved. You are my new brothers and sisters in Christ in Jesus. Amen. And I love you, and I will be praying for you. Welcome. Welcome into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. And quick thing, I told you I was going to give you a quick testimony and then we're going to pray and get off here. A few weeks ago, I went to a revival in Waycross, Georgia. Actually, before I get to that, let me tell you what I was suffering through. Since 2002, I had thyroid disease. I was diagnosed with PCOS, uh, estrogen problems, high blood pressure, cholesterol, and I've been on all kinds of medications, up to almost four or five medications, up until this year. And 
within the past few months, I was not anymore. I had really severe sciatica. My lower back, my side, my leg, excruciating pain. It, be, it ended up becoming a daily hindrance. Couldn't walk. Couldn't bend down to do anything. I couldn't even sweep my kitchen floors <laughs> when I twist and turn and it would catch and I would just, I'd lock up and I would hurt. The pain was excruciating, crying out to God, asking him to help to get me through it. And sometimes he would he would take the pain away. I could pray and I could rebuke that pain and it would go away. But he was teaching me a lesson. He was letting me go through it for a reason. Went to White Cross, Georgia to a revival. Drove 10 hours to get there. That morning, clock didn't go off. My clock works fine. It worked fine after I woke up. The devil was trying to stop me. On the way there, we had trucks and cars pulling out in front of us. Almost got sideswiped. The devil was trying to stop us from my blessing. Got there. Went to the revival. And there's two testimonies within this. Wednesday night, the first night that we were there, three days earlier, I had made a prayer list of people that I was praying for for salvation. And that night, Wednesday night, I was praying. I was in the spirit with everyone else there. And I was praying for those people. One of those people just so happened to be one of my loved one's family member. I was praying to God for salvation. Thursday, I get a text from my mother. And that person that I had prayed for Wednesday night had went to the altar Wednesday night and gave his life to Christ. Amen. Praise God, that was an answered prayer. So that's one testimony. The other testimony is Wednesday night, that same night, we prayed over a lady. And after we prayed for her, she got hit with the Holy Spirit. Well, it was my turn to be prayed over. I was hurting after 10 hours driving that sciatica was excruciating but I endured they laid hands on me while the guy the evangelist Mike Johnson you don't know him look him up wonderful brother in Christ as he was testifying to me and prophesying this lady was rubbing my back I didn't know who it was all of a sudden I felt fire and tingling in my feet in my left leg and it started moving up and I had this sensation and I was like where's this coming from who is rubbing my back I turned and look and it was the same lady who was slain in the spirit of the Holy Ghost she her, the Holy Ghost was moving through her they hadn't even prayed over me yet and the Holy Spirit was already touching me through her that pain was subsiding it went away then they laid hands on me that fire moved all through me. If you don't know the fire of the Holy Spirit, I pray to God that you seek it. It's the most amazing feeling. And I got deliverance that night from my pain. Later that evening, I went to the hotel room, and my lower back was still hurting. Michael asked me, he's like, do you want an ibuprofen for your back pain? And I just laughed. I was like, are you serious? No, why would I undo what God's doing right now? Why would I want to take a pill? You know what? I'm going to seek God. I'm going to trust him, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to let him continue the work that he's doing in me right now. I will be delivered. And 20 minutes later, pain from my, it worked from my toes up to my head. And it's gone. And I slept like a baby. The next day, revival, I was doing great. 
I was able to stand. I was able to pray. I was in the spirit. It was amazing. Drove 11 hours back home. I drove the whole way. Where normally I'd be in excruciating pain. No pain. No pain. I felt great. Do you know how it feels to be able to dance and to sing and to praise God now? Do you know how it feels to be able to sweep my kitchen floor now without hurting and in pain? My whole body, I feel better. I have more energy now. My thyroid, by the way, I prayed and fasted on it back in February. Lord healed me. Took it away. I no longer take medications now. Only thing I take now is silver biotics. Thanks to Pastor Carter for that little insight and that little info to help build my immune. But when I went back to that revival, I could feel the symptoms like I was trying to get thyroid again. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. And let me tell you, I am feeling great. I am energized. The Lord healed me, and I am declaring, and I am claiming it in Jesus' name. The weight that I gained from the thyroid is starting to fall off. I am healed, I am delivered, and I'm praising God every day. There's so many more testimonies I can give you. I could write a book on it. But you know how I got it? Because I trusted God. I have my salvation. He delivered me from my sufferings. He's delivering me from my trials. Do I still suffer? Every day. I still suffer every day from something. But you know what? I give it to God. And I trust Him. And I know that He's going to take care of it and He's going to deliver me from it. Amen? And He will do the same for you. I promise you. Give it to Him. Give it to Him. Trust Him. But thank y'all, thank y'all for being patient with me. I've went way over time. The Holy Spirit took over. Forgive me. It was meant to be. So you know what? I'm not even going to apologize because it was the work of the Holy Ghost. So all glory to God and for the work that he's doing and for those who got saved today. So continue to trust Jesus. You're not going to suffer. You're not going to continue going through this. Jesus will deliver you from your pain. He will save you. Trust him. We're going to close out in prayer, and then I'm going to stop the recording. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I humbly come before your throne, Lord. And we praise you, Father, for what you've done today. We praise you, Father, for this online church. We praise you, Father, for all that you've given us, Father. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace, Father. And Lord, we ask you to please tear down the strongholds, Lord, that are upon our lives. We cry out to you, Lord, because we need you, Lord. Please, without you, we are nothing. Lord, we need your deliverance, your guidance, and your wisdom each and every day. Give us the faith we need, Father, to believe these words that we pray. We pray to be called out of the isolation and to be self-centered with, and with, to get, excuse me, to be called out of isolation and called out of being self-centered, and to be with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, and in community and compassion, and to begin to realize, not only do I know you, but that I am known, Lord. You know me. Thank you, Father, for your love, your mercy, and grace. Thank you. Father, for what you bestow upon us each and every day. Thank you, Lord, for the communion that we have with you and with others, helping us to get through each day. And when all the trials that come our way is, Lord, 
is when you give us deliverance through our faith and trust in you, Lord. We pray, Father, that you forgive us of all of our transgressions, all of our sins, fear, self-doubt, anything that is not of you, Lord. Cleanse us from the inside out. And we thank you, Father, and we love you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank y'all for being here. I'm praying for y'all. I love each and every one of y'all. I didn't get a chance to look over the comments, but thank y'all for being here. I'm praying for those who got saved today. If you got saved, find you a good church, a good Bible-believing church. Get you a Bible. Seek somebody. If you need help, get help. Find fellow believers, people who trust in Jesus. Jesus has got you. You're going to be okay. You're going to get through it. I promise you, brother. I promise you, sister. Jesus is with you. We love you, and we're praying for you. God bless in Jesus' name. Amen.